Hey y'all, and welcome to Skyrim Scripting. On this episode, we're going to be making a quest to murder the folks of Riverwood. We're doing that so that we can demonstrate how you can write automated tests for your quests. This episode is dedicated to anyone who writes quest mods, anyone who writes mods with scripts in them whatsoever, and anyone who simply gets infuriated when walking into Riverwood, minding your own business, and hearing Hilda spout on and on about a stupid dragon. So I'm recording this episode because I very recently started making quests myself and they're so, so much fun to do. Oh my goodness. I love making them in the stages and the objectives and everything. The only thing I'm not enjoying so far is testing the damn things. It's a pain. It's a pain in the butt because you've got your quest with all your stages and your objectives and you got to do objective a before objective b but if you do objective 5 before objective 14 then everything blows up and you want it to fail and you want to trigger different objectives and you got to do all these things in the right order and there's all these like branches of conditional logic and testing them involves booting up the game walking around and then going to like the steward and doing the thing and reading the note or the book that triggers the quest and then killing the bandit and getting the sword and you got to go through and try all these different things in different orders to make sure that things work. Screw that. That's ridiculous. Write automated tests for this stuff. It's absurd. I don't know how anyone could possibly be like a, a big famous mod quest author out there and keep your sanity. How do you guys keep your sanity without writing tests for this stuff? So we're going to demonstrate a way that you can write tests so that all of these different branches of conditional logic will be automatically tested for us. And then sure, we can boot up the game and go through and make sure that individual things work. But for the most part, we'll be able to sleep at night knowing that the quest works. So let's jump into the game and see the quest that we'll be making today. So I'm here in Riverwood, and interestingly in the corner, I forgot to turn off some tests for a different mod that I'm working on. You can see that some tests were found. So if I hop in the game, I can actually just open up this thing and uh, run all this test for a totally different project I'm working on that will like let you style and automate the console and stuff like that. These tests just prove that some like custom commands are runnable and stuff like that. It automates things, and those tests are passing. Hooray! But we are going to mind our own business and we're going to walk into Riverwood and hopefully no one will interrupt us by spouting on about a stupid dragon. A dragon! I saw a dragon! What? What, what is it, no mother or mother? It was as big as the mountain, the mountain. black as black night. night. It, it flew, flew right, right over, over the barrow. barrow. Or, or Dragons now, is it? Please, mother. If you, if you keep, keep on keep like this, everyone right in town will no one's gonna think you're crazy. And I've got better things better to do things than to listen to of your fantasies. You'll see. You'll see. It was a dragon. Yeah. It'll kill us all. Did I see you talking to Sven? No, you Maybe did. not. Fuck off, dude. I'm trying to do a screencast. I hate you. Um, so what we're going to do for our quest is as soon as Hilda here goes on and on and on nobody about that stupid dragon. I nobody you, believes I you. I saw a dragon. I, I know you saw a dragon. Um... We're going to have our character just go mad with anger and we're going to trigger a quest as soon as she says, like, it was as big as a mountain and as black as night, it flew right over the barrow. We'll trigger a quest that's like, hey, you're going insane with madness and you can't handle Hilda saying this anymore, you, you gotta kill her. And then after you kill her, we'll go even more mad and we'll be asked to kill everyone in Riverwood. So let's get started. Do you mind if I put on some Oblivion? I've been like on a total oblivion kick recently. I can't hear it. It's kind of quiet. There we go. That's not bad. I checked these levels before and I think they're pretty good levels. Can you hear it okay? Alright, cool. Um, here's a project that we're going to be using, but that is jumping ahead. We're not going to do that yet. We're going to make a mod. What do you want to call this? I want to call it, I saw a dragon. A dragon I saw. I saw a dragon. Cool, coolio. Turn that on and I'm gonna open up creation kit so that we can make our mod. This is gonna be interesting because we're going to make some of the mod 
Then we're going to write test to prove that that part of the mod works. Then we're going to write some extra tests for parts of the mod that aren't implemented yet. That's the way that I've been writing my quests is I actually write the test first, but most of y'all don't do that. So we're gonna make quest stuff, show you how to test it. And then if you wanna be like me, um, you can write your tests first. It's called test first development or test driven development. So we're gonna save this as I saw a dragon. This level's too high, nah. And we're gonna load up Skyrim because let's actually go and find that Riverwood intro scene so that we know where we are going to kick off our code to kick off our quest to murder Hilda. Cause we just can't handle it. We just can't, we just can't. Hmm. All right, so we're just gonna search for Riverwood. So an object window, Riverwood. And just go to quest and you'll see a bunch of Riverwood quests. So the music is teeny bit too loud. The levels are higher than I normally have them. Um, so here's one called intro scene. That sounds nice. Um, it uh, is an event that triggers on location change. It's got aliases for Sven and Hilda. You won't see anything in dialogue because that stuff is all under scenes. So if you go to scenes and click on this one scene, you'll see something all too familiar. A dragon, I saw a dragon. What is it now, mother? It was as big as the mountain and black as night. It flew right over the barrow. So uh, this, this topic info is where we're going to add our little fragment where it will trigger our quest. Um, and maybe we'll do it in a, a gnarly way that's not nice and organized. We'll see. Let's go ahead and make our own quest. So I'm going to make a quest and I'm just going to call it I Saw a Dragon uh, Quest. Um, I'll give it a nice name like I Saw a Dragon dot dot dot. Um, and I don't know if any of this stuff is necessary, but I'm gonna give it a, make it a side quest, give it 60. Go ahead and close out of that and open it back up. And then should we just go and make this work um, kind of the way that y'all are used to? Sure, let's add a reference alias for Hilda. I'm gonna call it Hilda Ruff, unique actor, Hilda. And that always, this works for me with one actor, but if I have multiple, it never works for me if I don't say allow reserved. Hmm, because you can't even check that until you've got multiple or is it specific to the actor? I don't know. Um, but there we go, we've got Hilda. We're going to attach a script using the reference alias to her because we want to do something when she dies. Now there are actually some built-in scripts for on death. Um, I'm going to do an episode where I cover all of these default scripts, not all of them, but some of the ones that seem popular, like you can set stage on death. Uh, that's really useful. Um, I, I'm personally never gonna use any of these, but I um, clear location on death, stuff like that. Um, but I recently had someone ask me how to write code without writing code, and this is a way to write code without writing code. So we're also going to make a just top level quest script. Uh, this is where for me, I put all of my actual code for everything, and I think we'll do that too. So I'm just gonna call it I Saw a Dragon. You can call it I Saw a Dragon quest or whatever you want. And uh, I'll say, uh, this is the main code for the I saw a dragon quest. Uh, nobody's gonna see that, but we'll see it. Cool, so we've got our Hilda script. We've got our main script. We're kind of ready, except let's go ahead and make our stages and objectives. So let's say we've got a stage that is just zero. Uh, 10 will boot up the quest. So we'll have a new log entry that says like, uh, I can't stand it. I've heard Hilda spout on and on about that dragon for the very last time. I just can't anymore. 
she must die. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, that's startup stage. Wonderful. Let's make a new stage 20. I don't know what we're going to have as other stages. Um, we'll revisit these. I could just delete them for now because we're not using them. But, uh, yeah. We'll be nice and organized and we'll uh, add these later. So we got 0 and 10. And let's make an objective for murdering Hilda. So, um, objective 1... Should that just be zero? How do you guys like to do it? Do you keep it as zero? Um, murder Hilda. She deserves to die. And we'll add a target ref, which will be to Hilda, so that the little thing shows up above her head when this is displayed. So, coolio, coolio, coolio. Save. Um... We could obviously edit this code right here in these little boxes. Um, I'm going to open this up in Visual Studio Code, but first let's go ahead and open up that Riverwood intro to show you what we're going to do. Let's go to scenes. Here we go. Let's open up that topic info for it was as big as the uh, mountain as black as night. So here's the topic info and the dialogue scene. And this is where we're going to put it. Um, I can go ahead and just set up that fragment by just putting in a semicolon, hitting compile. Um, it will go ahead and if I open up this mod, I saw a dragon, scripts, source. Uh, it'll make this little tip for us, but you'll notice it's not even saved yet. Um, let's rename it to I saw a dragon riverwood intro fragments. Something that we can find really easily and makes a makes good sense. And uh, if we open that up, there's basically nothing in it. It's a default kind of fragment. Um, we can see here in our um, thing that it at least renamed it for us. But again, if we open it up, now it has just almost nothing in it. And this is just a kind of gotcha that I saw someone run into once. You gotta hit OK. And then your fragment code will show up. There's the semicolon we wrote. So just in case you're looking at the files before hitting OK, just know that that fragment function won't show up until you click OK. Uh, so now we're kind of golden because we have a quest alias for Hilda. We've got a stage to start up the quest. We've got an objective for murdering Hilda. Um, we don't have something that will like complete the quest. Do you guys want to add that really quickly and we'll have the initial version just finish the whole quest when you murder Hilda? Let's do that. So let's say I saw a dragon. Uh, this is like the murderous stage. We should we give these things names? We'll have a stage that is like stage 90, which um, is the shutdown stage. I did it. I murdered them. Whatever. And complete quest. Cool, 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 cool. And that's all we need. So I'm actually going to open up all this stuff in Visual Studio Code. Normally I do that um, without showing y'all how I do it, but I'm just going to do this really quickly because. I'm too lazy to pause. We're gonna go to I saw a dragon. Cool, and now I can open that up as a workspace. And there we go. And we've got all of our scripts. So the scripts that we have so far are just, uh, ooh, we forgot the Hilda one. We've got I saw a dragon. We've got the Riverwood intro fragments, and we're going to want one on Hilda to track when she dies. So I'll just open that I saw a dragon quest back up. We'll go to the quest aliases. We'll go to the Hilda one. We'll go to scripts, which I was showing you before, but I forgot to actually add one. We'll add one and um, we'll just call it like I saw a dragon Hilda script. And if it doesn't already pre-populate this with reference alias, populate that with reference alias. Wonderful. And then you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead and do something that is like what y'all probably do. 
Um, let's go to Riverwood intro. Uh, you probably don't edit the fragments outside of Creation Kit, so I'll do it the way that you guys do it. All right, here is that topic info. And, um, whoops, accidentally like made a new one or something. There we go, and there's our semicolon. I'll edit it in here. Um, I'm gonna write it in here first though so that you can see it. Um, we'll just have this set the stage of that quest. So, how do we get the quest? Um, we could add a property to this fragment. That's what y'all probably do. So let's go to the fragment script name properties. Add property of type quest. I never do this type of stuff because I always do everything code. Yo, where's quest at? Yo, uh, we'll call it um, murder quest. And we'll fill it with our, I saw a dragon quest. Okay, and that should be good enough. Just want murder quest. Let's close out of that so it saves. Don't save. Oh, where's my property? Did it add the property? It did add, it added it down here. I'm not used to adding fragments in the little boxes and properties. So uh, in our code, in that little fragment box, we're just going to say murder quest set stage 10, and we'll say murder stage set displayed objective. So objective displayed zero. That was our first one. Um, cool. I'm actually gonna put this not in here. Don't save. We're gonna do it in Creation Kit, the way that you guys do it. Compile, and it doesn't give a big old block box saying that the compilation failed like it would do here. Um, so that means that it worked. If it does nothing, then it worked. So this should actually kick off the quest, the trading game. Let's go check out our quest. Let's check out our quest. A dragon! I saw a dragon! What? What is it now, Mother? It's raining a little bit hard it to hear. It was as big as the mountain and black as night. It, it flew right over the barrel. Dragons now, is it? Cool. We started. You if can you see keep the on like this, her. Um, let's see, what does it say? Um, I don't think you're crazy. Murder Hilda, she deserves to die. I just can't stand it. I've heard Hilda spout on and on about that dragon for the very last time. I just can't anymore. She must die. Uh, let's make it so that it actually completes things when she dies. Uh, now, I was looking at all the default scripts, and I definitely see one for setting a stage on death so we could complete the quest on death, um, but I have no idea how to do individual objectives, which is what we're going to want. Um, so I'm going to use my own code, you guys. Um, I don't know how y'all would do something like this without code. So I'm just going to do event on death because it's super easy. Uh, actor killer. And event. And... Um, we need the quest. So... Let's go and attach it to the reference alias. Uh, no, we don't need to. We can get the owning quest. Set objective um, completed, zero. Get owning quest. Set stage. I think we said 90. Let's try it in game. And you know how much I like testing quests. Let's go test it again. I hate doing this stuff manually. A dragon! I saw it's a dragon. dragon! What? What is it now, Mother? Hello, chicken. It was as big as the mountain and black as night. It, it flew right over the barrel. Dragons now, cool. is it? Cool. It started the class. 
just god mode because I don't want to like run out of magicka or something. I'm just gonna kill it. Unlike this, everyone in town will Don't set it up! Oh, someone's coming back! He's dead yet. Completed the objective. Now let's see if it's a quest. That's how that works. Think you can take me? Cool, completed, and it says, uh, I did it, I murdered them. Fantabulous, fantabulous. Now, let's have it be that when you murder her, um, you get a new objective to kill Sven. Um, maybe we'll get, like, a message box or something that says, like, um, I don't know, your madness is continuing. Um... I think message boxes are and testing them is slightly out of scope. So let's do this. Here's what we want. We want to open up the creation kit. And we're going to set up tests. We're going to test what we just did, which is not a lot. It's kind of stupid to test. Um, we've got an objective, and if you complete it, you complete the quest. Um, what do you do, right? Um, getting the test set up isn't gonna suck, but I mean, it, it could feel like it sucks. Um, just remember that this is going to save you hours, hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of testing things. So hang with me while we get these tests set up. Um, so, let's see, I saw a dragon, here's our existing class. We're gonna make a new one just called, like, I saw a dragon tests. Because all of your tests, um, get attached to... Let's actually click on quest. I saw a dragon test. All of your tests get attached to a particular quest. It can be whatever quest. Uh, don't make it start game enabled. So untick that. You can, but it'll run the test automatically when you start the game, and you probably want to use that cute little UI. Um, friend ones is fine, but we're going to run the test a million times, so I'll just turn that off, and uh, let's attach a script. Now, for tests, uh, imagine organizing your tests into individual files. You might have a different file for each stage. You might have a different file for each just... Uh, uh, act, if you will, like an act of your mod. Um, you could have different files to test whatever. Every file is going to have multiple tests in it. So just think about that for grouping things, but you don't need to learn that. You can just put everything into one script, and at some point you're going to be like, Jeepers Creepers, this script is getting pretty big and hard to navigate. Maybe I should make a second script. So we're just going to call this one, because we're only going to make one in this episode, we're going to call it I Saw a Dragon Tests. And it can extend quest for right now. We're going to change that. Uh, the main test for the I Saw a Dragon um, quest. Cool, 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 cool. Now that we've got that, we can switch over to Code Land. Hoo -hoo. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to actually want to turn this test script into a test. So just like if you ever made a Sky UI mod configuration menu, you change quest to say Sky config base. Uh, we're going to say that this is a Sky unit test. So we need to go and get Sky unit. I think I already have it installed, so I'm going to delete it so that I can follow along with you guys. Uh, so this is not on the Nexus yet because it is alpha and I'm working on it. Uh, I'll give a quick shout out to another testing framework. There's one from Chesco called Lilac. This is probably the very first testing framework for Fallout and Skyrim because it works for both. It's a papyrus testing framework. It's a unit testing framework. That's where we get the name from. And uh, like for a Sky unit because the name Sky Test was already taken. So this is by Chesco of Frostfall and Campfire fame awesome awesome person and uh, this is great and I used it for a while I'm not gonna really go into detail over why I made my own uh, long story short it lets you do these really cool things you can like you can set up scenarios 
And then after you've set up your scenario, you can do things like expect an integer to be 42 or expect a form to equal your uh, item form. Uh, you can expect bools to equal something, expect floats to equal something, expect references and forms to equal something. That's cool. That's nice. That's not how I want to write my tests. I want to do something like expect quest to be at stage 20. Um, expect actor to be dead. I want to do stuff like that. It just makes more sense to me. And unfortunately, this is not written in a way where you can extend it. Uh, it's not extensible. So we're going to use the sky unit. And right now, there's a, I wrote up like a, a brief description of how to get started here. And I will fill the wiki with all kinds of documentation once it's ready. But I just want to give everyone a preview. That's why we're here. So this will be on Nexus soon. Uh, go ahead and download the 7-zip file here. That's our mod. And from Mod Organizer 2 or Vortex or whatever, head on over to your downloads. And uh, I've got other ones from testing. Just install that, called Sky Unit, whatever, and enable it. Cool. Uh, that's what that has, that cute UI that we were looking at before. And speaking of which, I'm going to turn off my tests for console menu. Okay, now that we've got that, uh, I actually need to configure my Visual Studio code to know about it. But you don't need to do that. Now that I've done that, I should be able to just start typing sky unit and it'll autocomplete test in a second. Boom, cool. Uh, you're going to want, if you're considering doing this, gotta write your code in Visual Studio Code, Sublime Edit, something that is auto-completion that will auto-complete from different mod scripts. Gotta, it's the only way to stay sane and do this. So here's what you do. You just make a function where you declare a bunch of tests. Um, if you had multiple files, then it would just be tests specific to whatever group of tests that you decided to make. And so we'll make a test for making sure that the quest starts okay um, whenever that fragment gets hit, which is very challenging to do. And then we'll do, um, make sure that the quest gets completed and the objective gets completed when you murder Hilda. So you just say function test, like so, in function. And then we can just say test, test, um, Uh, quest starts okay and then um, mm, 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 mm. Uh, quest is completed when Hilda is murdered cool and now to set those up you make functions for each one of them so function uh, quest starts okay test you don't have to call it test at the end. Just do whatever you want to. Thank you, truck out there, for backing up. All right, cool. I think that truck outside is done going beep, 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 beep. I'm backing up. I suck at backing up. I took three minutes to do it. Um, function um, quest complete when Hilda murdered. Uh, so what do we do here? Um, I'd like to make sure if the, the quest starts okay, that the quest is zero, it's at stage zero, and then um, once we trigger that fragment, it goes to one, and the objective, we'll make sure the objective is not displayed, and then after we trigger the papyrus uh, function, fragment, thingy, then we'll make sure that the stage is, is ten. These might seem like really, really silly things to test, and I get that, but if you have multiple stages and multiple objectives, this really, really starts to pay off. So what we need to do is we need to get a reference to the quest. Um, there's a couple ways we could do that. We could just go ahead and add a property if you want to. Um, I'll save this and we'll, um, we could even use the UI to add a property, but that's absurd. Um, 
instead of adding a property, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make it so that that quest is something we can get from any one of our scripts because we're going to want to do that. This is something I do for all of my quests. Again, you might think it's silly, but it will pay off for you and you'll see in this episode. So for every one of my quests, I think I'm gonna have to wait for a leaf blower to stop. I'm gonna make some more tea. It's gonna be like, I have to wait in IRL 30 minutes before I can keep recording because the leaf blowing crew just showed up. All right, they might start up again. It's only been like 15 minutes and they normally take like 30, but let's see how much I can get done. So I think I was talking about how I have all of my quests set up so that you can always get the instance of the script to them. Um, and you may find the way that I do it weird, but it's a programming convention. So I always have one global function on all of my quests that return the quest instance. So I'm gonna have a function that returns I saw a dragon. And you may think this is a funny uh, name for it, but it's gonna say get instance is gonna be the name of it. Global and function. Uh, there's already something that is like called get quest that conflicts with it. And um, uh, regardless of whether it's a quest or something else, if I want to be able to get an instance of something, an instance of a script, uh, I can use this name for everything. So um, the way that I do this is I honestly just use my form IDs all the time. Uh, this is probably D62, so I'm just going to return um, game, get form from file, D62. I'll double check which ID it is. Yeah, it's a D62 and there's a D8A. Usually whenever I have Skyrim loaded, I find that the first quest is D62 and when I don't, it's 800. Uh, so that's the form ID, which you can find from Creation Kit. So I'm just gonna return D62 and then the name of this mod, which is I saw a dragon.esp, which you can see behind me. I guess I'll go down in the corner because we're gonna do a bunch of coding. So I'm going to return that as an I saw a dragon. Uh, now, whether or not your thing extends a quest, an object reference, or whatever, if anything is a base form, you can add a get instance function to it. So that allows us to, from our Hilda reference alias, from our papyrus uh, fragment, from our test, from anywhere, we can really easily get an instance of I saw a dragon. So for example, I can say, uh, I saw a dragon, uh, the quest, I'll say murder quest um, equals, I saw a dragon dot get instance. We do that from wherever. So I can get the murder quest. I can make sure that it starts at stage zero. So if I look for expect and I scroll through here, uh, we'll see that Okay, as I was saying, um, if you just say expect, uh, you'll see like expect bool, float, form, int, string, that's how I would have it by default so that you aren't overwhelmed with everything for actors and object references and forms and all the other things that I'm making. Um, so what you can do for quest stuff is you can just import assertions for the actors, quests, whatever. You can import quest assertions. And all of this will be documented on the wiki, on the wiki. So that means when we type in expect, we also get expect quest, expect quest objective, quest stage. Uh, right now these don't have any documentation on them if you just uh, click them like this, but I'll add a bunch of documentation to each one. Uh, so we can expect the murder quest dot two B and then you can see a bunch of B stuff be done be complete be displayed for objectives and stuff be true here's a bunch of stuff be running and stop to make sense for quests but we can see that it's at a stage and um, what is the stage number well we can know that it's zero but we should probably start listing out in some variables 
all of our stage and objective numbers because we're going to want to be able to share that from a variety of places. So this is just really good convention. So we're gonna say int, we're gonna say property so that we can get it from other scripts. And we'll say um, uh, stage not started equals zero. And these things have to be auto read only. That's how you make properties that can have values. Uh, stage, I'm gonna call the second stage murdering. And we know that one is 10. And then we'll make some objective ones too. So property, um, objective, murder, Hilda equals zero. Auto read only. Because that's only all we've got so far. Uh, so that allows us to say, uh, we assert that this is at stage murder quest dot. You can see those stages. We could say not started. Uh, and then, for example, we're going to do something. Come on, keyboard. We're going to do some stuff, and then it will be at the next stage. So we're going to do some stuff to trigger it to advance, um, basically do what that papyrus fragment is doing. Um, we can also just make sure that that first objective is not displayed. So we can expect... Uh, Quest objective is one of the ways to do it. Murder quest, um, and then murder quest dot objective murder Hilda. So it gets a little bit long there. To uh, we don't want it to be displayed. We want it not to be displayed. And then later we want it to be displayed. So here's what we've got so far. Um, we get our quest thingamajigger, and we'll extract this out to, um, why don't we just put this into a field? Because all the tests are going to want it. So let's just have a field called, um, I saw a dragon. Let's just call it murder quest. And uh, we could test runs before everything. So we could say murder quest equals I saw a dragon dot get instance. We do that. Uh, but there's actually a function set up to make this easier. Um, normally to keep everything clean and to be able to like go to certain functions for certain things, we make a function called before all. It's also one called before each, which we'll use in a moment. Um, and so this runs before all this all the tests. So it's just nice. Uh, similarly, there's one called before each, which we actually want to use to reset the quest. Um, because before you run every one of these tests, we want the quest to be reset, rolled back to its original state. So you can use that using murderquest.reset. There's one gotcha with using reset. It'll only work if it's stopped. So you have to say murderquest.stop. And uh, I'm thinking ahead here, I'm actually going to want to make sure that we do this after all the tests finish too. So we can say after all. Uh, that means that we can go into the game, run the tests. Before each one of the tests, it'll make sure that the quest has been rolled back. And then as soon as it's done with all the tests, it'll also make sure it's rolled back so that we go in the game, run our tests, see if it works. If it works, we can actually run around and start doing the quest. So what do we do here? Um, well, it would be really nice if we could get a reference to the topic info, which the fragment is associated with so that we could get an instance of this fragment and then we could just call fragment dot fragment zero um, what sucks is for fragments like this on topic infos I have not been able to find a way in the universe to get a reference to this I can find ways to get references to the topic info object but I can never seem to cast it to the fragment type um, I don't think the system knows that it's like attached or whatever. So how do we do this? How do we make sure that we're testing this and we trust our tests, but without testing it? Um, for other things like the Hilda script, we can actually run this reference alias script and run the on death and actually know that that works. We'll do that for the Hilda step. So how do we know that this works? Well, here's what I like to do. For every fragment that you have, my personal rule, and I'm new to this, but my personal rule is every fragment 
can only be one line of code maximum. And that line of code should just call a function. So every papyrus fragment should just be one function call. And then you put all of your logic somewhere else in a nice organized file that has all of that logic. So I'm gonna replace this with a call to the murder quest. We'll put a function on the murder quest called like begin quest. Uh, you may be saying MP, there's already something called start. Fine, thank you for reminding me. But start won't put it at the particular stage that we want and display the particular objective that we want. So for my quest, I've been adding a begin quest function. So we can just say, uh, I saw a dragon dot. Remember now we've got get instance. So now we can call functions on it trivially. So I'm gonna say begin quest. And it's gonna be red because it doesn't exist. So we're just gonna go over to, I saw a dragon. And we're gonna make a function called begin quest. And now this is a way, let me just get rid of that stuff because we're in the quest. And instead of 10 now at this point, uh, we give it something more um, descriptive stage murdering, set it to the murdering stage, and set the objective to be displayed. It's nice and uh, explicit. It's, it's easy to understand what's going on there. So uh, now that's no longer red. So this is a way that whenever you can't get an instance of something like a fragment that you want to actually trigger, if your fragments all just call one function, so long as you've got that function right, then your test can just easily call all those functions on your quest script. It's a nice way to do things. It's, it's really easy. We could do that for the Hilda script too, because we're actually gonna update this Hilda script to also only call one function. I like my magical effects to do this too. I like to say on effects start, call one function. Uh, I like to consolidate my main logic into a single file or a set of uh, global uh, files with global functions on them and stuff. So I'm going to say I saw a dragon dot get instance dot and now what do we want to do? Let's trigger an event that we'll make called like on Hilda death or something. Um, I think that works for me. Let's do on Hilda murder and we can pass along the killer. We can check that it's uh, something. So this is red, just like before, so we'll make this. And uh, you can actually make this an event if you want to, just for semantics. Event on Hilda murder, actor, killer, and event. You're the one triggering the event. And uh, in here is where we'll do this. And we don't need to get owning quest because we're in the quest. And once again, We'll turn these into something more semantically meaningful. Um, stage, Ooh, we didn't add a stage for complete it. I think we have that as 90. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And now that is no longer red. So we no longer need the hill script. We no longer need the papyrus fragment. We just do everything in here. Um, if you want to, you can start adding comments to these functions, but normally if you name them well, then you should be good. And what's good about this is uh, now we've got in this one main quest script um, something that triggers every time Hilda's murdered. We'll do the same thing for Sven, and we can in those check to see which stage and objective you're at and pass or fail the objective based on if you killed them in the right order, because next we're going to kill Sven. But if you kill Sven before Hilda, uh, excuse me, we'll fail the quest. So, what do we do now in our test? Now in our test, we can't get a reference to the papyrus fragment. So we do the next best thing. Uh, we say murder quest dot and um, begin quest. That at least proves that our begin quest sets the correct objective and stage. Like I reminded you that when we've got a really simple quest like this, it may seem like a lot of overkill, but it's going to save you tons of time in the long run. 
Um, and now we can go ahead and make sure that it gets completed when Hilda gets murdered. So let's make sure that if we begin the quest, then it's at the murdering stage and Hilda's displayed as the um, objective there. We can just reuse those. And now we'll do something and then we'll make sure that the stage has changed. Um, we'll say uh, stage completed. Click off scan likely. I don't need insurance. Um, not from you. Um, and we can assert that this is now completed. Be completed or be complete? Complete. Cool, and we can insert above here that it's displayed and uh, make sure that it's not complete though. Now we do something. Uh, now we've got two options here. And um, if we want to, we can just say murder quest dot on build a murder and pass like the game player as the killer. Um, if you want to, this is maybe what I recommend because it's the simplest. Um, now, if you want to do things a little bit more accurately, you can get the actual reference alias script here, the Hilda script, and call on death there. It'll exercise a little bit more of the code and it confirms that this works. So I'll show you how to do that, but I'm gonna tell you that if you want to just have all of your tests basically call a function on the main quest and just use that and then just make sure that all of your papyrus fragments and your other scripts all call those functions then uh, you've got pretty good test coverage at that point um, but let's actually have this get that script and we'll do the same thing once we have Sven so let's make little helper functions that will get the scripts so like, for example, the I saw a dragon Hilda script, we'll say get Hilda script and function, we'll actually make this a function. And um, what are we going to do in there? Well, we've got the murder quest, so we can actually get an alias off of it. Uh, we could use the number like one, which I think gets her. Um, but because we have SKSE, we can get alias by name and just get the Hilda ref that way and that gets us an alias um we want them as a reference alias so we can say um uh, let's return i think if we try and return this as a i saw a dragon hill script i don't know if that'll work but it may so let's say get hill script dot on death and now we pass our game get player And what's nice about this is if we had a typo in here or if we didn't put this in here, we're testing the script. We're testing to make sure that the Hilda script works, not just our underlying one. So let's see if this stuff all compiles. Oh, I've got to tell my uh, uh, Visual Studio code to have a couple of uh, extra dependencies. Cool. Do y'all want to go in game? I have no idea if this is going to work. No idea whatsoever. Make sure that I've got some of these tests turned off. I was doing some stuff while the, uh, um, while the, um, leaf blower bastards were here. I'm sure they're very nice people, but I hate the profession. I wish all leaf blower machines would just die a terrible death. Not the people. People, I'm sure, are wonderful. But the leaf blowers themselves can go to hell. Not the people who are the leaf blowers, the leaf blowing machine. Cool, we found a test. Let's see what that is. I saw a dragon test. I don't know if this is going to work. Um, oh, those both show up as pending. It's doing the quest stuff. So it's a. Uh, resetting the quests and stuff before every test but we never actually hooked these up so 
uh, we were playing at the beginning with these. If you don't hook it up to a function, then it just will automatically pass. And in the console, when you look at it, it'll call it a pending function. That allows you to use this as a kind of to-do list. Um, but you need to hook these up to functions for it to actually run. So we're gonna hook this up to the quest starts okay function. And we're gonna hook this one up to a different function. So we just use fn for function. Quest complete when Hilda murdered. Yeah, it was just stopping the quest is why we saw that stuff, but it wasn't showing us like cool stuff like objectives and we didn't see the little pin over Hilda kind of marker show up. I wonder if my tea is cool enough to drink yet. I think it's spicy enough. Or I didn't add enough chai. I don't know which. Which one to test. Cool. And uh, now we should see an objective show up. After it starts. Killer. And uh, at that point, if we looked around, we would see the little uh, pin over her head. And then we killed her, so it got completed. So the test ran in like two seconds, but those um, less than that. Um, but those messages up there take a while. So, all right, we could go test it out right now. But speaking of tests, let's make this do something new. Let's have it, instead of completing it, ask us to kill Sven. So we'll go back to these tests and we'll kind of rename this. Uh, instead of quest is completed when Hilda's murdered, we'll say when Sven is murdered. Kind of copy and paste this. Sven. And we'll comment this out for right now. And then when Hilda's murdered, let's see, um, uh, asks player to kill Sven after Hilda is murdered. So let's rename this one. Give it a nice kind of descriptive name. Um, uh, kill Sven objective shown after killing Hilda. How about that? Cool, now we've got this hooked up. So now we just need to make sure that these things do different stages. Let's add an objective for murdering Sven. And we'll call that just objective one. And in the background, I'll open up Creation Kit just so that it's opening for us. Let me have it open up the, um, I saw a dragon. Cool. That will be open by the time we look for it. So we've got a new objective. Um, we probably want a failed stage. Um, and we can call these things whatever we want. I'm going to call that 99. Because uh, we want to be able to fail things if they're done in the wrong order. Like, uh, you should kill Sven after Hilda's murdered. Quest is completed when Sven is murdered. Let's say, after Hilda. And we'll say, test. Quest is failed when Sven killed before Hilda. And we'll hook that up to a function. We can go ahead and do that right now. Let's do a function quest failed um, if kill Sven before Hilda. Now our, our uh, quest doesn't actually say like don't kill Sven, but we're just testing things. We're just kind of learning how to do some stuff here. And so that doesn't do anything yet, just like this doesn't do anything yet for uh, completing when Sven is murdered. Uh, we want to make sure that the Sven objective now is shown after killing Hilda. So after you kill Hilda, the stage should no longer be completed. It should stay in the stage murdering. Uh, the objective murder Hilda should be uh, completed, but the Sven one 
should not be completed, but it should be displayed. To be displayed. Vandaba. And uh, let's have the, make sure that the, um, Murder Sven one is not displayed beforehand. So we're just kind of checking a couple things. Just it's really just poking objectives and stages and making sure that they're at the right states, essentially. And you can make helper functions to do for this, whatever you want to do. Um, so let's say quest complete when Sven is murdered. Let's do that one. Let's say when Sven is murdered after Hilda after Hilda. So we're going to begin the quest there. We're going to kill Hilda. And then we're going to make sure that um, some things are set up in the way that we expect them to be. Expected it's in the murdering stage. And I don't care about the Hilda one more anymore. I trust it from up here. Um, and we expect the Sven one to be displayed but not complete. And then uh, after we do stuff, uh, we're going to expect it then to be complete and Sven to be completed. Let's just check that it's completed. Nice and simple. Uh, so now we need to kill Sven. So we could actually just go ahead and copy and paste our Hilda script. We'll need to attach it to Sven in CK. But I'm just going to go ahead and make it a Sven script. And it will trigger on Sven murder. And then we're done with it because we're just going to put all of the logic in the main file. So here's on Hilda murder. We'll say on Sven murder. And we'll end up with some extra logic in here. Um, right now it doesn't have to do anything. We'll, uh, we can fail the test and then make it work. We don't need that anymore. So now we can use that to kill Sven. So we'll also just make a little helper script for getting the Sven script. A little helper function, excuse me. Called get Sven script. It uses the Sven ref, which we haven't made yet, but we will, as a return as a Sven script. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. And that means we can say get Sven script dot on death, which is how you trigger that kind of kill, how you trigger the on death, game, get player. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Um, and now we can do this last one if you want to. We can say uh, quest failed if kill Sven before Hilda. So let's begin the quest and then uh, assert that it's at the murdering stage. Then let's kill Sven. And let's assert that it's at the um, failed stage. So stage failed. And we can assert that the Hilda one is maybe failed. Um, we can assert that the uh, objective murder Hilda assert that it is failed. So expect quest objective for this quest, uh, objective murder Hilda to be failed. Um, and beforehand we can just make sure that it's, it's clearly not failed, but sometimes for everything that I test below I'll do a not test above, or if there's nots below I'll do yeses above, stuff like that. Cool, now this should not work because we don't have that logic in there. Let me go ahead and before we boot this up in game or anything, um, let's make that Sven uh, quest alias and we'll attach the script to him. Sven ref, unique actor, Sven. 
attach the scraps. And we'll do Sven. Where's my Sven script? It might be hidden or something. Didn't I compile it? Sweet leaf blowers. Still waiting. It's been a while. Someone please destroy every leaf blowing machine on my behalf. I'm gonna work on a different project for a while. It's been 30 minutes. I'm gonna take some migraine medication. Uh, it's been about an hour. I'm working on a different project. It's pretty mad. I'm writing my Sky Unit tests in Sky Unit. Okay, I think they're done for now. Um, what the fuck were we doing? Uh, let me make sure my creation kit is still set up for the dragon project it is. Uh, we were mapping the Sven script to Sven. God, I hope there's nothing else we were doing. Um, because that'll actually pretty much make things work. We also should make the Sven objective and make sure that that has the little location thingamajigger over him. If we didn't already do that, I totally forget what we've fucking done. The past hour has been a nightmare. Fuck leaf blowers. Fuck leaf blowers so hard. Um, God, why do those machines exist? Just go back to raking, you pricks. Um, God, so loud. So loud. I hate those machines. Good girl, baby. I know your mom's acting like she's angry. She's fine. Come here. Come here, baby. Good girl. Just restarting CK made it so that this Sven script shows up. Come on up, baby. Come on up. Come join us. All right, or hide behind me. That's fine, too. I saw a dragon Sven script. Great. Um, cool, 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 cool. Um, objectives. Objective one, Mer Sven. Mer Sven. And that'll have the Sven reference. He's a dick. Cool, cool, cool. Are we done? Are we done and ready to play it in the game? Mm -hmm. See, there's the Sven script. We've got on Sven Murder. We're not doing anything on Sven Murder. Let's just go ahead and do that. Um, so we'll say, um, did we test that? If you do them in the wrong order, it breaks. Failed. Failed. Murder Hilda should be failed. Okay, cool. So, um, let's just say if you haven't killed Murdered Hilda, so, um, and all of these things will only do if you're in the murdering stage. So, um, you have to get stage equals stage murdering. Otherwise we just don't care. Say end the killer is the game player. Cool, so then uh, if is 
is objective completed. Objective murder Hilda. Let me sneeze. I heard that when dogs sneeze, it's a sign that they're playing. Good girl, baby. Okay, if you've already murdered Hilda, then we'll set the objective completed. Murder Sven. Um, otherwise, we'll end will set stage completed. Excuse me, I'm gonna sniff. And I have more tea. Um, otherwise, it's set objective failed. Murder Hilda. We'll set this up to have some message boxes, but that has problems when it comes to testing, but it's doable. So let's do. <laughs> set stage failed. Let's try it out. Before we even jump into game, uh, let's still look at this screen, still looking at the on Sven murder on Hilda. Um, we may as well trigger that uh, Sven objective. Um, we set objective, objective murder Hilda, but remember we're supposed to set objective displayed, objective murder Sven. Now let's see what works and doesn't work. We haven't tested this for a while. We haven't run the tests. I'll often like boot up Skyrim, run the tests, and then use reload script to tweak the test and run it in Skyrim. Reload script to tweak the test, run it in Skyrim. So we might do that. So remind me not to actually quit out of Skyrim. I only actually quit out of Skyrim if um, a bunch of tests have been changed. I love the rain, but it's a little bit loud, so there we go. What's gonna work and not work? Failed, so a couple of these pass. Failed. Quest has failed when Sven killed before Hilda. Let's look at it, what it says. Expected the quest stage to be 99, but it was 10. As for quest has failed. Let's go look at that test. Alright, quest failed if, um, make sure that those are mapped together, if Sven is killed before Hilda. And we expected it to be 99, right here, the stage. But it was 10. stage we should be in the murdering stage we're in the murdering stage thank you refrigerator for turning on i need you turning on and producing more sound right now and this stage failed 99 we could try it and see if it works But it doesn't. Let's look at this script. Calls on Sven murder. I'm annoyed that that's the status. Let me run it again. Big deal, and it'll probably give us the same result in person. That's always the case for me. A dragon! I saw a dragon. a dragon! What? What is so it now, Mother? Quest to turn on it and was we'll as kill big Sven. as the mountain and black as night. It, it flew right over the barrel. Dragons now Objective. is it? Come on. If you keep on like this, everyone in town will think you're crazy. 
And I've got better things to do than listen to more of your fantasies. You'll see. It was a dragon. It'll come. This, the, the things from the test are still running. I don't think you're crazy. Cool. I did it without um, running the test beforehand. Oh, we never have issues with that, though. And I've got um, better things to do than listen to more of your Failed. Murder Hilda, she deserves to die. Yeah, I mean, the tests are fucking right. It didn't go to the damn failed stage. Um, do we have the failed stage set up correctly? Do we even have a failed stage? Did we ever make it? Dragon. That's always the case. Every time I doubt the tests, uh, a hundred percent of the time thus far, the tests have been right. I'm like, it should work. Why doesn't it work? Well, the tests say it fails. It probably fails because you're... Stupid. Making bugs. Come on, I saw the sign and it opened up my mind. I saw the sign. We don't even have a 99. We made that shit up. Shut down stage. Whoops. You killed the wrong folks. Or something like that. Fail quest. Cool. Save. Save. Game time. Woo. Da 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 Game time. Woo. Let us run our tests. And then I do not know why it is not kicking off resetting the quest appropriately. It works fine. Works fine. Uh, and if we test it in person, the same thing. And you can see all the, the tests passed. Um, this is how I do it. I mean, we could do another one and it would be trivial, right? Like, um, we could do hot. And then we could copy the script, and we could copy the spend script, and we could call it HOD, the HOD script. And we'll change in the script name, we'll change the name spend to HOD. And then here, in our actual test, first we'll write the test, and we'll say, um, quest is completed when HOD is murdered. when Hod is murdered. I'll add that fail one down here. Let me type these out while this police siren passes. We did some renaming up here. So let's do ask player to kill Hod after Sven. I'm gonna copy this Sven, the Hildas to Sven one. I'll say kill Hod objective shown after killing Sven. Hilda. And then the thing we're going to do is we're going to try before and after we kill Sven. We expect the murder hide objective not to be displayed. Honestly, we can just simplify it a bunch. Expect hide thing to be displayed and not to be displayed. And if you want to, you can just double check that we stay in the murdering stage and the stage doesn't change. Cool, this is on HOD script, which we don't have, so we'll make an on HOD script, which returns a HOD script, then becomes HOD. Cool, 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 cool. So the ass player to kill HOD. And then the quest is completed while Hot is murdered. It used to be when uh, Sven is murdered. Let's add the failed one at the bottom. Quest completed when Hot is murdered. C 
So we'll do um, so Helga. Plus them. Should be in the murdering stage. And the hard one should not be complete. Not that it necessarily matters here, because we're just testing that move to stage completed, which is fine. Um, and if you wanted to for semantics, you could say like, um, expect it not to be at stage completed, and then expect it to be at stage completed, if you want. Um, now it's murder hive. And finally, the quest failed if Sven killed before Hilda. And then we'll do a hide before Sven. Just as good little tests. I mean, you don't have to test all those edge cases. It's just test a couple of them. Um, hide killed before Sven. We'll just begin the quest and then we'll kill Hilda. Should be at murdering. Then, whoops, should not be. Um, the hard one should not be failed. And then the hard one should be failed. Or the Sven one, rather. Because you're supposed to be killing Sven. And we fail it, and we still fail the whole quest. So here, we'll kill Hod. Kill Hod. Let's add little thingamajiggers here to make it easier to read. Kill Sven. Kill Hod. Kill Hod. Kill Hilda. Shown after killing Sven. I want to kill Sven in that one. And then the Hod one should be displayed. Yeah, this is actually helping us uh, kill Hilda. Cool, that's pretty good. Uh, let's hook these up because I kind of unhooked them up. It's completed when Hot is murdered. Failed if Sven is killed before Hilda. Failed if Hot is killed before Sven. One's supposed to be hot. Test 16. Need an end function. You know, layer of the fire is good. And then on 62, I have an extra parenthesis or something. Missing a parenthesis. And similar thing on 72, where I probably copied and pasted. Probably the same exact deal on 77. Probably a couple of them. I don't see others. On hard murder is not a function, we'll make that. Could just leave a comment out and then fix it. Go to game. And then we'll uh, see the status of the test. A bunch of stuff might blow up. And then we'll uh, implement the hive death logic. And then we'll run the test again. And we can do that without restarting Skyrim.
Ooh, my super strong in a few minutes. Ask the player to kill Hod after his friend is murdered. Okay, we didn't do that. Quest is completed when Hod is murdered. Okay, we didn't do that. Quest has failed if Hod is killed before Sven. Cool. Three things passed, and the three things that failed should fail. So let's ask them to kill Hod after Sven is murdered. Let's just do that one. So when you kill Sven, instead of setting everything to complete, we'll set objective displayed, objective for Hod. Compile. And then we're going to reload script. I saw a dragon. Kill this murder Sven. He's a dick. Hopefully we'll get two of them now. Ask player to kill Hod after Sven is murdered. To kill Hod when Sven is murdered. Our test might be slightly wrong. Ask player to kill Hod after Sven. Okay, expected objective 2 to be displayed. We haven't done it. Of course it doesn't fucking work. Um, so actually, we'll be in a really good state once we add the HOD objective. my phone timer for the soup. There it goes, it's going off. Good timing, almost. I saw a dragon and it opened up my eyes. I saw a dragon. We'll make a hod reference. I'm just gonna call it hod ref. Unique actor. Hod. Touch the script for hod, which we already made. There it is, I saw a dragon hot script. Good deal. And now let's just go to objectives. We'll make one for murdering Hod. We'll call it index two. Murder Hod. This is so annoying. And we could like tweak these to make sure that you electrocute Hod. Like um electrocute electrocute. Electro cute. How do you spell that? I did it. Hot is so annoying. And for that one, maybe we can only uh, make it success if uh, you use like sparks or something. Come show the hot back. All that, Sven. Hot, good deal. Good deal, good deal, good deal, y'all. Let's try it again. Did we forget to do anything? Probably. The test just make let me be so lazy. Because if stuff breaks, the test will just fucking tell me, and I'll be like, oh, I was an idiot. I forgot to do that. Tweak done. Tweak done. I don't have to go in game and like set up a scenario and run over to HOD and like wait for something to start. That would be absurd. I want two failures. Aha! The quest is completed when HOD is murdered. We didn't do that. Quest has failed if HOD is killed before Sven. Cool. The two things that we would expect to fail, fail. I love it when that happens. I love it when a plan comes together. Um, so let's implement those. Right now, nothing happens on uh, Hod's murder. Uh, we'll say if you're supposed to be murdering, so if you've killed Hilda and Sven,
then we'll complete the hard one, and we'll complete the whole thing. Otherwise, we'll fail um, whatever the current one is. Say, um, if the Hilda one is, is completed, else if um, the Sven one is not completed, and if uh, So if the Hilda one isn't completed yet, we'll fail it. If the Sven wasn't one isn't completed yet, then we'll fail it. And uh, to do test for electrocution. Let's try it. You read script. I saw a dragon. Oh, my dog is dreaming right behind me. Like running in her sleep. Cool, works. Um, let's electrocute Hod. I mean, we're at an hour and a half. I mean, that's pretty much good enough. You could do this yourself. Um, testing for the electrocution would be slightly annoying, but it's totally doable. Um, I can do it and then show you how I did it. Cool. Um, I'm gonna make a form list with all the like fire destruction things that are uh, not fire, uh, lightning related. Um, uh, this form list will only have things from the base game, but other folks could add to the form list. I think if they had a patch. So I've just got it over here, and then I'm going to start typing in things like sparks, and I'm going to go to spells, and find magic spells. And I'm going to do the other ones. Because I don't, I don't think there's a way that we could just check for damage type to be shock damage. Yeah, we get the form that hit us, and which may be a spell. Um, which has uh, effects that you can get, uh, magnitude of them, duration of them, area of them. Uh, you can get the actual magical effect, costliness, this magic effect right here, associated skill. Yeah, I don't see anything, so I'm just going to uh, use my little form list here. Um, that's got most of them. That works for me. I'm just going to use sparks anyway. And then let's go to um, uh, I saw a dragon. Uh, that's in character quests. And I'm going to map this to a property on this. So we could just use this add property thing, which I never use. Form list. Um, electricity spells. I saw. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Now I can, whenever Hod gets hit, see if the form list includes what he got hit with. Um, ideally, it's the thing that most recently killed him. Um, so we'll just grab the on hit event signature, which is long, and we'll go to. Um, First of all, if we go to I saw a dragon, I'm going to move this property that got added up here. Not bad. I might try and use that UI more on my screencast. Um, Hod script. Cool. I'm going to put these on the same line just because. What's wrong with that? Because it's angry. Why is it angry? Missing a parenthesis. 
cool. Um, on this script, this script hangs out with HOD, so we can say a uh, form uh, property um, last form that hit HOD auto. And we'll just say uh, last form that hit HOD equals the source. Cool. And then when Hod gets murdered, here's where we complete everything. But before we complete everything, let's say um, um, if uh, we want to get the Hod script, so we can do it just by saying um, Hod script. Hod script equals get alias by name hod ref as I saw a dragon hod script. Um, if and if else, uh, if the electricity spells has the form of whatever hod was most recently hit with, then we'll complete it. Uh, otherwise, we'll fail it, and we should give you like a message or something. Um, let me open up CK again. I also just noticed that I'm doing the implementation before the test, which is a big no-no. It's a big no-no. Um, I saw quest objectives electrocute hot good stages new. Ninety-five. Um, shut down. Uh, you were supposed to electrocute them. You fool. Fail quest. I'm sure, there's a better way to do that, but we'll say fail due to damage type stage or something like that. Say int property stage wrong damage type failed equals 95 auto read only. I'm sure there's a better way to do that. I'm just I'm just learning how to do my um how to organize objectives and stages and shit like that. Um, so we'll complete it, otherwise if they didn't use an electricity spell, then we're going to fail the hard one. So we'll mark it as failed. We should be doing the task before this, but then we'll use stage wrong damage type. Now let's go over those tests. Um, completed when Hod is murdered, we need to make sure that that one actually hits Hod with uh, sparks or something. So let's say, um, I should have the fucking creation kit open still. I'll write code while it opens. Let's just have this open. Uh, saw dragon. Because uh, we'll get sparks and we'll map it to this so that we'll have sparks. We can go ahead and say a uh, spell property sparks auto if I can spell and uh, we'll get the hod script and we'll say on hit and uh, the aggressor will be the game get player and we'll hit them with sparks. And then I don't care. False, 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 false. I don't care about any of that shit. And but here we're gonna hit them with flames or something. We're just an iron sword or whatever. We'll use flames. Uh, so here we hit them with flames. Use flames instead of an electricity sh 
shock, damage spell, the sparks. Uh, it should be at stage wrong damage type failed. And uh, the murder. Oh, wrong fucking one. First, let me copy all this stuff. Now let's undo some stuff here. We're gonna go to the one where it says completed when Han is murdered. We'll use sparks. And then this one says failed unless you electrocute, so we'll use flames instead. And now I just need to go to that test script and give it those spells, which should auto complete. So I'll go to tests, go to our main script, go to properties. Uh, autofill and the spells both autofill because we use their names. And let's go into game. Let's run those tests. And then we will try it in person and then we will be done. Not in person, not IRL, you know, game in person. No idea if this is gonna pass or not. We may have broken everything. Good thing about tasks are they're usually easy to fix when you break the whole world. Cool, it passes. Um, uh, we should just go try it out. I just don't trust it. Um, oh, and we'll use a save. Um, I don't trust it after running the test because it didn't work before. Usually works for me um, when I do stop and reset after I run all the tests, but I don't know, it was pissed for us. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and TGM and grab my flames. Here you can see the power. Uh, the way I'm running tests, which I never told you, is um, as soon as I get into the game, I just hit Z because it automatically equips the um, What? What is it now, Mother? Um, it was as big as the mountain and black as uh, night. The power for running the right over the barrel. So here we've got this. Dragons now is it? If you keep on like this, everyone in town will think you're crazy. Someone there. I hear you. I hear you. Failed the whole thing. And I've got Explode. better things to do than listen to more of fantasies. Hilda, so we could. Thanks, Jack. It's cool that I can see that. Um, Does complete the objective. Now it wants us to look for the two pods, we'll save. Then we need to flames on end. Right here, so I'm gonna player add spell to DD to A. Let's grab it from right here. Hey, we 
much we can um, we did, uh, we've been murdering people in Riverwood, tons of them. We completed the annoying I saw a dragon thing. We kill all kinds of them because they're because it's all infuriating. All infuriating all of them. All of them. So that is my fuck to y'all. That's the result of, of our, um, learning how to do tests. This is how you learn how to do tests. You uh, you kill everyone in Ripwood. So um, yeah, you can go ahead. You can check it out right now on my GitHub, uh, GitHub.com slash Mralper slash Sky Unit. I'll include it in the video description below. Um, yeah, I'm still writing tests for it. I'm writing my Sky Unit test suite for my Sky Unit, and I want to release it after I've got a bunch more tests. And right now, I have things like uh, assertions for quests and arrays and actors, but I want some assertions for object references and uh, spells and things like that, so that it comes out of the box with more of those really nice assertions. So thank you for hanging out. I hope you enjoyed murdering a bunch of people in Riverwood, and I hope that one person out there, one person out there was like, oh, okay, I get it. These tests are briefly annoying to set up at first, and take a moment to wrap your head around learning how to do them, and save me an ungodly amount of time testing things in the game. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope somewhere, someone out there appreciated this and I love you all. Happy modding. All right, happy modding everyone.